Chuck, but look, I, I've got to rush off to work in a moment, so could you... Yes, all right, but listen, Giles, if we are going to meet up this evening, I would just like to say... Yes. 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 Yes, all right, I'll see you there. Bye. <sighs> Mm -hmm. Morning, Clem. Oh, Mummy, I didn't notice you there. <coughs> Came to borrow some coffee. Yes, I did manage to work that out, Claire. Mm. We actually came to borrow some coffee yesterday morning. Yes. And the day before. Yes. And on each occasion, you said you were going to the shops that day to buy some of your own. Yes, so I'm not even bothering to mention it this morning. I know I won't make it. Yeah. I gather, Claire, from sort of the odd hint that you're not feeling any better. Oh, razor sharp you are, Mummy. <laughs> <laughs> Claire, love, you must stop. I know, I know, I must. I just can't. Look, I, I, I know what happened with Edward as thrown your confidence totally sideways, but you really must put that behind you, Claire. Look, you're still young. You're, you've got so many things to look forward to. Name one. Well, um... Well, uh... <laughs> well, just from the practical point of view, you must sort your life out. You must get back to work for a start. Well, since I don't even seem capable of walking out the front door, I can't really see myself working. Oh, of course you can do it. Claire, look, when you left for Australia, the manager of the building society, what's his name, he said there'd always be a job there for you. Mm. Mr. Kingston, all you've got to do is go and see him. And suppose he says no. In my current state, if anyone said no to me, I'd just burst into tears. He won't say no. He's already told you he'll say yes. Not to me, he won't. Not like I am at the moment. Oh, Mummy, aren't I just the most useless, unnecessary person you ever met? No. Oh, oh Claire, darling... The trouble is, I know exactly how she feels, as if the ground had totally disappeared from underneath her feet and all her confidence had trickled down into the void. It's just how I felt after Henry died. Mm. And I'm torn between being supportive and coming the heavy mother to make her snap out of it. What do you think I should do, Russell? I think probably you should get on with updating the bygone books mailing list. Oh, you are a pig. I was doing that until you interrupted me by asking about Claire. I know. I'm rotten, aren't I? Professor Cyril Crowther. What about him? Do we need to transfer his details? I don't think there'd be a lot of point. Why not? He died in 1983. <laughs> <laughs> when did you last check through this list? Never. What? Never since you went to the shop? Nope. Cecily Hoffman. You know... What? Thinking about Claire... Russell... Now, listen. I think she should have a go at A.T., Eighteen. Assertiveness training. A friend of Bob's and mine tried it. Now, he's gay, but was paralytically shy. Three months of assertiveness training, though, and he'd plucked up the courage to ask out the curate at St. Thomas's. Mm. <laughs> We've been together ever since. Divinely happy. Mm, yes. I'm not sure that Claire has exactly the same problem. No, but she has the same lack of confidence, the same lack of self-esteem. Assertiveness training can really help people like that. Might be worth trying. Oh, anything's worth trying to get it out of our current state. They do classes locally, I know. I'll get the details from Bob. Great, thanks. By the way, how's Giles? Oh, all right, apart from the wandering hands. Ah. Honestly, it's like going on a date with an octopus. Really? <laughs> Tell me, how do you manage... Cicely Hoffman, Cicely Hoffman, Cicely Hoffman. Cicely Hoffman, mm. remind me. Got any more details on her? It's hard to tell. The name's about the only thing I can read. Yes. You know, I really will have to modernise this system. I've been telling you that for years. It needs dragging into the 20th century. Yes, you're right, it does. Even if that does involve some financial outlay. Oh, Russell, does this mean you're going to go back on everything you've ever said against them and buy a computer? Good heavens, no, Sarah. I was thinking of buying some new file cards, though. <laughs> Of course, in our young day, someone behaving like Claire would just have been told to snap out of it. Yes. That's not good enough for the youth of today. Oh, no. What they're recommending for Claire now is A.T. Oh. 
But surely she's rather young for that, isn't she? What? What are you talking about, Vera? Well, isn't AT that thing the doctors do for <clears throat> older women? <laughs> I mean, they take out their hormones and replace them with somebody else's. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake, Vera. Can't you ever get anything right? The process you're referring to is called HGV. <laughs> oh. AT is assertiveness training. Ah. Apparently, the idea is that some people don't have the strength of personality to get their points across. You know, to assert themselves. Can you imagine that, Vera? Well, I... I... No, of course you can't. <laughs> no, much as I love Claire, and I do, I'm afraid at this moment she's just giving in, showing no backbone, no gumption. She just has to snap out of it. Assertiveness training doesn't do anybody any good, does it? Well, as a matter of fact... No, of course it doesn't. I knew it was good. <laughs> Hello, love. You up? Mm. Assertiveness training class number two. That's it. Did the instructor say what you'd be going on to this week? Yes. Tonight we'll be learning how to say no. No? Yes. N-O. And you'll be learning how to say it. Mm. And that's going to take all evening. Mummy. It's all right. I'm sorry. I was joking. How will you do it? More role-playing, that sort of thing? Yes. I can see how it works. You know, acting out the scenarios, coming up with the right things to say in a non-pressure situation. Yes, I'm sure it does. I must say, you seem a lot more positive after just the one class. Mm. Soon be up to facing Mr. Kingston, won't you? It'll take a bit of time. Yes. But I can see how AT works. You know the basic principles. It teaches you to have an accurate estimation of yourself in relation to other people. Really being able to stand on your own two feet. Good. Shouldn't you be off? Mm. Learning to stand on your own two feet? Yes. Go in. Mummy, I'm scared to go on my own. Will you come with me? <laughs> And I hope you haven't forgotten that it's Valerie Brown on the pension count of Sister Mary's birthday on Friday. No, I haven't. I was thinking of giving her hat. I've bagged handkerchiefs. Oh. <laughs> well, maybe I could give her... And Sylvia Thwaites from Meals on Wheels is doing guest soap and bath salts. Oh. Oh, dear. I can't think of anything else. <laughs> Bella, you're always so devoid of ideas about anything, aren't you? Well, I... I mean, what you have to do when addressing the problems of birthday presents is to think, what does the person in question, in this case Valerie Brown on the pension count of Sister Mary, enjoy most in the world? Oh. Hmm. But you can't buy malicious gossip, can you? <laughs> think, Vera, think. Activate both those brain cells. <laughs> what does Valerie Brown on the pension counter's sister, Mary, always have her head buried in? The sand? <laughs> no, Vera. A book. Oh. Usually a detective story. Oh. And you're suggesting I should buy her a detective story? <laughs> Trouble is, I don't know very much about detective stories. No, you don't know much about detective stories, but you know a man who does. <laughs> oh, yes. Do I? <laughs> Russell, Vera. Russell. What, now? <laughs> you know, Russell Bryant. Sarah's boss, Russell Bryant. The gay man who owns the bookshop. <laughs> oh, and you're suggesting I should go to bygone books to buy a detective story for Valerie Brown on the pension counter's sister Mary's birthday. Yes, Vera. I wonder if the Guinness Book of Records has a section on the longest time it ever took for a penny to drop. <laughs> Funny. But I should never have thought of Russell as particularly gay. What? Well, he always seems rather a serious man to me. <laughs> Vera. I don't have to explain the meaning of the word gay to you, do I? Oh, well, I wouldn't... Yes, please, Eleanor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
No, I started off pretty sceptical, but by the end of the evening I was really converted. Oh dear, I'm not sure that bygone books can cope with assertive staff. I don't fancy being bossed around all day. Assertiveness is nothing to do with being bossy, Russell, or being aggressive. It's about having a proper self-evaluation. Ah. Being able to say no, for instance. Have you spent the whole evening learning how to do that? Yes. Ah. Oh, I thought it was as funny as you do when Claire first told me about it, but it's true. In certain situations, saying no is one of the hardest things one ever has to do. What kind of situation? Well, say... Well... One that a woman comes up against a lot is, is saying no to a man who's pressuring him to go to bed with him. Ah, right. A man like Giles, perhaps? What an excellent example. And A.T. helps you to cope with that by role-play? Yes, by playing the scene out. You learn the vocabulary to deal with the real situation. Mm, can't really see it working. It does. Even after one lesson, I feel a lot stronger about it. Go on, try me. What, me? Role-play? Yes. You play the part of someone who's pressuring me to go to bed with them. Oh, all right. Um, but you do realise, Sarah, with absolutely no offence to you, that what I'm taking on here is something of a character part. Yes. Oh, all right. Uh, let me see. How does one go about this? Um, yeah. OK. You said? Hello, darling. You fancy a bit then, do you? <laughs> <laughs> well, that didn't seem to give you too much of a problem. Oh, it's not difficult when men are as crude as that. Oh, dear. Was I crude? Well, what's hard to deal with is when people are civilised and articulate about it. Oh, right. OK, I'll try this. Do you know, Sarah, I don't just want to go to bed with you because you're extraordinarily beautiful, <laughs> but also because I respect you as a woman and because I just think we could give each other an enormous amount of pleasure. Yeah, you're rather good at this, Russell. Yeah. Dreadful waste, isn't it? <laughs> oh, come on, Sarah, you know you're desperate to go to bed with me. No, actually, I'm not, Russell. Well, you're just saying that. You're afraid of the strength of your own feelings. You know there's this fantastic chemistry between us. No, Russell, there isn't. Oh, for heaven's sake, Sarah, come to bed with me. <laughs> no. <laughs> Nice surprise, hmm? I assumed it would be your grandmother. Oh. <laughs> Assertiveness training this evening? Yes, yes. You aren't trying to get me to come along with you again, are you? No, no. Good. I just thought well, you seem to have responded so well to last week's class that... A.T. is all about you standing on your own two feet, Claire. I know. Did just seem to do you a lot of good last week. Yes, I did come away feeling better. All that, all that stuff about not being afraid of anger and... And saying no without feeling guilty about it, it was good. So, next time Giles calls up and asks you out, you will politely but firmly say no? Exactly. Steel hand in the velvet glove. And you won't feel guilty and self-recriminating about having said no? No, of course not. I will feel... Hello? Ah, Giles. No. 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 No, I'm not actually doing anything this evening. Um, <laughs> yes, all right, meet you there at seven. Bye. Well, I couldn't just have said no, could I? Yes, that's exactly what you could have said. Well, I'd have felt so guilty. Oh, yes, of course you would. You know how I'll always think of you in future, Mummy? How? As a velvet glove yeah. with a jelly hand inside it. Oh. <laughs> yeah, there was no question about it. I mean, Russell lives with that very polite young man, Bob Grattan. He's definitely gay. You didn't hear the things he was saying to Sarah. <coughs> he may be gay, but he's not just gay. He must be bisected. <laughs> bisected means cut in two, Vera. <laughs> well, I should think he is, with those opposite urges pulling him in both directions at the same time. <laughs> No, I mean, you're using the wrong word. You should have said, Russell is bisexual. Ah, 
Are you admitted then? No, I don't. <laughs> oh, Vera, you're sometimes so slow in the uptake. Still, I suppose God knew what he was doing when he distributed his gifts amongst us. Yes, I'm sure he did. That's why he gave me so much money. <laughs> Bill, must be going. Of course, dear. Uh, what time is curfew at the Sycamores these days? <laughs> Come in. Good evening, Claire, darling. Hello, Granny. Clara. You haven't seen Mummy, have you? Oh, wasn't she going out for a drink with that man, um... What's his name? Giles? Yes, she was, but I was hoping she'd seen the light and changed her mind. Well, why should she? Doesn't matter. Oh. Now, I was looking for her because it's my AT class this evening. Oh. I do get terribly nervous about going on my own. Oh, really, Claire? I thought the whole point of this mumbo-jumbo was to build up your confidence. Oh, yes, it is, Granny. You know how fragile confidence can be. One minute you feel you're on top of the world, the next you feel you're totally in the wrong about everything. Well, haven't you ever felt like that? No. <laughs> no, no silly question, really. I don't suppose you'd come to the AT class with me, would you, Granny? Oh. No, another silly question. Oh, well, I suppose I won't go this evening. A very good idea, Claire. You don't need this AT hokum. All you need is a bit of old-fashioned gumption. Would it help if I were to come along to the class with you, Claire, dear? Oh, yes, it would. Thank you, Vera. Night, Granny. Good night, Eleanor, dear. Take care, won't you? <laughs> <laughs> Mummy, you did it? Yes. I rang up this morning to make an appointment with Mr. Kingston. I've just come back from seeing him. Oh, Claire, darling. I reminded him that he said there'd always be a job for me at his branch, and I asked him if I could take him up on his offer. Great. And he said no. <laughs> oh, Claire, I don't know what to say. <laughs> well, how about congratulations? Congratulations? Oh, for heaven's sake, Mummy, can't you tell when I'm joking? Well, well evidently not. I, I mean, it's so long since you've cracked even the tiniest joke. Oh, <laughs> I'm delighted. Sorry, dirty. Um, when do you start? Monday week. I couldn't believe it. He said yes straight away. Oh, I feel really silly about it. No, no, no guilt, no recriminations. You did it. That's the important thing. Yes. Do you think the assertiveness training helped? Probably. Mm, possibly. Oh, I don't know. I think it was partly time and partly getting my own thinking sorting out and partly a bit of old-fashioned option. Well, it's wonderful, whatever caused it. Listen, we must we must celebrate. Um, wheel out the champagne, get a few friends round. Oh, just a few. I still don't feel up to celebrating. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm just, just Granny and Vera and, and Russell. Bob's away, so he's at a loose end. Oh, Clara, so <laughs> Uh, I feel you've come through a major test with flying colours. <laughs> Excuse me. Hello. Oh, Giles. Talking of major tests, Mummy. Um, yes, Giles. Well, I'd be happy to come for a drink with you, but on uh, certain conditions, the chief one being that you give up your relentless efforts to get me into bed with you. <laughs> I enjoy your company, um, but I do find your f physical and verbal approaches unwelcome at this time. Well, I mean, it's the perpetual gropes, Giles. <laughs> um, look, if we can meet on my terms, fine. If not, I think we should stop seeing each other. Um, look, why don't you think it over for a couple of days and then give me a call? Goodbye. <laughs> my colours all round. Oh. Thank you, Claire. And no guilt. No. Nope. You don't feel any unresolved anger? Any urge to call him back, apologise, say you didn't mean it? No. Nope. All I feel is quite unbearably smug. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and it was great to see everyone at the Building Society. Yeah. Mr Brownlow was there and there were lots of... Oh, and they just all seemed so genuinely pleased to see me. And why shouldn't they be? Exactly, Russell. I spoke to Bob on the phone just before I came out. Here he sent lots of congratulations. Oh, that's sweet. Say hello when you next speak to him. I will. That's Bob Russell's talking about, Vera. Russell's friend. <coughs> yes, yes. A little light beginning to percolate the fog now, Vera, dear. <laughs> well, what should we toast? Just Claire or Claire's continuing success with assertiveness training? Oh, really? You're not going on with all that rubbish now. You've got your job back, are you, Claire? Certainly. I'm only just scraping the surface of it. Uh. I gather you went along with Claire to the class last night, Vera. Uh, uh, y yes, uh, yes, yes. How did you find it? Did anything rub off on you, do you think? Well, 
I can't really imagine Vera coping with all that psychological claptrap, Sarah dear. I mean, with the best will in the world, no one could say that getting a grasp of complex ideas was your strong point. You know I always have to explain the plot of Neighbours to you, Vera. <laughs> Eleanor, I have to say that I find your perpetual sniping at my intellectual abilities both hurtful and tiresome. <laughs> if our relationship is to continue, I must ask you to show me more respect in future. I'm leaving now. <laughs> and if you wish to contact me again to apologise for your behaviour, well, you know the telephone number at the Sycamores. Good evening. <laughs>